This show is brought to you by Subculture Corsets and Clothing. Uh, for all your corset, alternative clothing, and pinup needs, clothing, shoes, and accessory, visit them online at subculturecorsets.com. No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Motherfucker! What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over! No comment! The f- Brian Keene was also unavailable for comment. Welcome back once again to The Horror Show with Brian Keene. I'm your host, Brian Keene. That's a little uh, Matt Hayward. Uh, the song is One More Time from his solo EP, Come Hell or High Water. Mary, Dave, Phoebe, why would I be playing that as the intro for this week's show? Uh, Any ideas? No. They're all stumped listening <laughs> audience. Well, I'll I'm tell stumped. you why. And by the way, I'm say hello, stumped. of course, to Mr. and Mrs. Excitement, Dave and Phoebe. <laughs> And, and, okay. and Miss Giggles Mary. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we have a full studio today because also here with us, uh, all the way from Ireland. Woohoo! I think he's now broke the record uh, of traveling the farthest to appear on this show. Uh, he is a musician and horror author whose books include What Do Monsters Fear, Brain Dead Blues, Practitioners, and This Is How It Ends. Uh, he's also compiled the best selling anthology, Welcome to the Show. He's been nominated for the Bram Stoker Award and the Irish Short Story of the Year. Uh, I am, of course, talking about Matt Hayward. Welcome to the show, Matt Hayward. Thank you very much, bud. I should point out your your wife, Anna, is here in the, in the lurking in the studio, and <laughs> and Kelly Owen, author Kelly Owen. Uh, so so you bring groupies to, uh, no matter where you go. <laughs> uh, they tend to follow. <laughs> 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 this week's show is brought to us by The Strange Case at Misty Ridge by David Bryan, a supernatural cosmic horror novel centered on psychic investigator Jack Keswick. Yay. Uh, Jack previously survived a tragedy that claimed many lives. He knows he's a lucky man. Life-changing injuries may have forced him into semi-retirement, but now he spends his days fulfilling what has always been his passion, investigating reports of paranormal occult activity. Uh, this novel was in part inspired by the works of William Hope Hodgson. I got to tell you, Mary, you Please especially, do. because you're a cosmic horror fan. I oh, am. Yeah. I purchased this book uh, because uh, David Bryan has has bought a big block of ads on Defender's Dialogue and also bought this ad on this show. And in reading the ad copy on Defender's Dialogue, I said, this sounds really good. So I bought a copy. I'm halfway through, I'm fucking loving it. Really? I'm David, really if you're listening, there's your blurb. I, I'm fucking loving it. Brian Keene. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, The Strange Case at Misty Ridge by David Bryan. The paperback is available wherever books are sold. Uh, the ebook is exclusive on Amazon Kindle. And currently, Phoebe, because I know you like a good bargain, you can read it for free if you oh. have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. Wow, awesome. nice. Yeah. Wait, now, do you have this on Kindle or paperback? No, I bought it on my Kindle. Hmm. So, so I was going to steal it after you. Maybe I'll just have to steal your Kindle. I, no, I think you should buy. <laughs> I think you should buy a paper bag. Is what you should, you should buy, do. and then I can borrow it. Okay, there that we sounds go. good. That sounds it like sounds a plan. Interesting. See, word about like we're paranormal. spreading the word. All right. Um, obviously, Matt is here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna interview Matt in the second half of the show. Uh, but before we do that, we got a couple things to get to. I've decided to dispense with the news this week. Fuck really? the news. Yeah. Is there even any news? Dave, you've noticed I'm doing that more and more, right? Just fuck the news and we don't even talk about the news. Yeah, because a, <laughs> a new segment, fuck the news. Yeah, fuck the news. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm sick of it. Yeah, I'm well, sick of it. I, yeah. Okay. But uh, I. <laughs> We're 
Skinny Girl. Skinny Girl. Skinny Girl. Okay. Well, well, yeah, I, you know. I don't have a problem with this. It's I, not our network. It's not our. There's something. If there's something worth talking about, we'll talk about it. There's but. one piece of news, Brian. Somebody got an award this weekend. Somebody got an award this weekend. Well, yeah, we, we'll get to that. We'll get the. We'll, we'll oh, get, now who's shy now? Yeah, Bert Aww. won an award for butthead of the year for yep. messing up the computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I want to remind folks the Killer Con is coming back this time in the heart of Texas Doo-doo. with a focus on extreme horror. Well, you are full of sound effects today. I am. I am. <laughs> That's because she's got that giant gallop of wine here. That she's I, been... uh, but I would like the record to show it is fake wine. But yes, I am. Awesome. I don't, I don't know if people can hear drunk that. Drunk off That's, fake wine. I am, I am fake drunk off of fake wine. So it's going to be a good time. <laughs> so basically you're pulling too, a coupe. Uh, does coupe do that? You've been up with coupe till six in the morning when you. everyone else is drinking. I'll tell you. You would think he was drinking, right? You would. But he's you not. Would. You would. I always thought he was just drinking. <laughs> the drunker, just secretly drinking. The drunker people get, the more fake drunk Coop gets. And, really? And apparently... It's a contact drunk. Is that what it is? It is. It is. I've been around people that are that are so drunk that the essence of their drunkenness, it, it's like a contact That drink. does not work on Kelly Owen. Doesn't it, though? No. No, it doesn't. She's off mic. <laughs> and I, I, I got to tell you, I, I like this that she's not near a mic. Now we can torture her. Oh, she's back there reading the far side. Okay, well, we won't hear from Kelly for this interview. There will be a lot of hand gestures that only we will see. Anyway, yeah, studio. Killer Con, uh, Joe R. Lansdale, myself, Edward Lee, Lucy Taylor, uh, the fake drunk Mary San Giovanni, <laughs> and Matt Shaw. Um, it will feature the inaugural Splatterpunk Awards celeb- ceremony which of course celebrates the best in extreme horror and splatterpunk it will also feature the very first jf gonzalez lifetime achievement award we are giving that to david j scow um we got actual fucking awards phoebe nice like spent money on them and everything i was gonna ask if you were if it was public knowledge who the winner was or if it was some big well the lifetime achievement award yes yeah um but but are there other awards there are other awards. Best oh. novel, best short story, best anthology. And that's all a surprise? Collection. That's all a surprise because our judges are still tallying it up. Okay. But yeah, that will take place uh, August 24th through the 26th. So two weeks from now at the Wingate Hotel and Convention Center in Round Rock, Texas, which is just outside of Austin. For more information, go to KillerCon.com. And of course, speaking of cons, all of us, everyone in this in the studio, mm-hmm. are home from scares that care. Uh, so, what I thought we'd do, Dave, instead of news, I thought everyone here in the room we could we could just talk scares that care, uh, do a little wrap up. Yes, Matt, as you mentioned, uh, I got the the 2018 Scares That Care Assistance Award. Um, for those that are not familiar, th- this is an award that the charity gives out to people who help the charity. Kane Hodder. Uh, actor Kane Hodder has gotten it. Count Gordeval has gotten it. A uh, number of other people. I had no idea I was getting it this year. And Mary had no idea I was getting it this year because apparently Joe Ripple told everyone in the genre, we're giving Brian this award. Don't tell him. And also don't tell Mary. <laughs> and also, Mary can't lie. Uh, you and Lombardo, apparently, were, were who Joe instructed people not oh, to Oh, Lombardo tell. didn't know either? Yeah, Lombardo did not know either. We didn't know either. Uh, yeah, we didn't. Oh, you guys didn't know either? No. That's why we went to dinner. Yeah. Nobody told us, so we went oh. out to eat. Oh, you weren't out there in the crowd? No. Nope. Nope. Oh, well. Nope. We were, but our hearts were there. You we know were, what? Yeah, we were eating tuna. I didn't know either, and I was so surprised that I didn't deliver a speech. So so this week, I wrote a speech, and I, I put it online. I thank you both in the speech. Okay. So so you were there in my heart, Dave. I know. I know. We're, well, very, we're very proud. No, it's really cool. I, I wish I would have seen it, but. Well, the, here, you can the see it. The award's well, the right there. the important thing is, is you want it. Hold on a second. Oh, it's a it's nice beautiful. award. Well, it's, it's not like it's I won classy. anything. It's, a, it's an honor. It's not, it is, you know. it is yeah. both yeah. lovely. It looks like a crystal skyscraper. You could, you weapon. Could and it's also good as a weapon. That's yeah. good for like a zombie hold, apocalypse. Hold that in your hand. Now be it careful. It has some it has sharp oh, edges. It has too. length and right, girth. Seriously, this thing is really and heavy. Weight. And, and uh, <laughs> I'm handing it back to you before I injure myself. Mary's talking it. dirty. Dave, yes. That's, Note that's what for happens future shows, we can't sit these two next to each no, other. No, they're idiots. They're, they're it, 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 it's, it's, it's like Coop and Lombardo. I, yeah. I didn't mean they're to sexualize your yeah. award. I apologize. Yeah. They're doing their own show. You do a lot for them, so it's so nice that they recognize. No. Really? This is heavy. Don't yeah, drop Yeah, seriously. It. Oh, my God, it is heavy. Yeah. Oh, my God, it is heavy. Whoa. And it's got a little star on top. It's so pretty. It's, so pretty. it's classic. So anyway, yeah. Um, you just want so to see nice. me. I'm now super honored. Because it's all covered in fingerprints. I know. How do you polish crystal? What do, what do you? What do a you soft do? cloth. 
gently. All right, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will try to be mature. I'm sorry. <laughs> I broke Mary. <laughs> You're regretting your trip all the way from Ireland already, Matt. Aren't the you? opposite. No. Um, so, I, I look, I all I will say about scares at care, because I don't feel it's right for me to to speak to everything that went on, because quite honestly, I didn't see anything that went on. I'm on the board of directors helping run the convention. I don't, I mean, I, I can tell you, you know, what it's like to wrangle the Sons of Anarchy for their photo <laughs> op. Um, but, you know, I, and actually they're all sweet fucking guys, and I had a lot of fun hanging with them. But uh, I, I miss everything that goes on. Um, but what I can tell you, the convention was enormously successful. Uh, for the first time ever, immediately after the, the convention, we can write three checks for three families in need. Wow. Oh, three my gosh. Three full checks. That's amazing. Wow. That's, so, that's wonderful. Yeah, thanks to everybody. That um, is wonderful. So, yeah, let's just go around the, the, the studio. Dave, let's start with you. What, what were some of your favorite moments of Scarcity? Uh, well, first of all, uh, the drive down. The first time in five years we did not pass a truck fire. So uh, <laughs> that, that was delightful <laughs> yeah. um, because the traffic between our house and, and, and Williamsburg, Virginia is some of the worst in the United States. Uh, so we, we always actually, hit we always hit like the worst or the horrible things happen. So that was good. Uh, we went down Thursday this year. Uh, last year we went Wednesday, and so this year we went Thursday. Um, so it was just like hanging out Thursday night, uh, and I pretty much got yelled at within the first half an hour being in the lobby. Uh, Mary San Giovanni and I apparently struck a nerve with our review of Richard Lehman book. Uh, and many people took me to task for Oops. daring not to claim him the greatest writer in the history of the universe. Really? See, and, nobody said anything to me oh, about it. Oh, they were it. all yelling at me, and they were all recommending other layman books to read. Oh, no, you need to read this one. You need to read this one. You need to read this one. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I gave my opinion. It's a valid opinion. You know, I, I Get will away say from this. <laughs> I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, you know, Kelly Layman, Dick Layman's daughter, was mm -hmm. there at the convention, and, and she and I actually discussed the episode in the bar. Uh -huh. um, she had no problem with the episode. Okay. So. Well, I wouldn't think know. she would. Yeah. Because we didn't say mean. We just no, gave we our opinion. No, we said it as a person. Yeah. It's, he was it wasn't perfectly delightful. about Dick Layman. It was about that particular book. So, anyway, apparently we, we, we struck a nerve, though. I heard a lot about it. Really? Some people liked what we said, and other people were. Some people, and some people were very agree. neutral. And then there was a couple of people that were like angry, like I'd go into their house and kick them. So, oh my goodness! Which you know, I offer that as a service, by the way. Um, you know, if you're interested. <laughs> so uh, I'm always looking for ways to make money and yell at people. So, uh, so there was that. Um, I have to say, I wish people would understand, I don't necessarily do really good in big, giant crowds of people yelling and drunk. Um, it's, it's a lot for me oh, to Oh, so take. you were hanging out with Tommy Clark all weekend. Uh, no, no, I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> no. I can only talk that. No, I'm not even getting into that. Um, Tommy, you know I love you. Yeah, no, we just like to pick on Tommy. But uh, seriously, there's like a group of like 50 people, and they're all screaming because they've all been drinking all day. Uh, that's not my scene. I enjoy smaller conversations. So uh, if I'm in a room and I'm quiet, the last thing to say to me is, why aren't you talking, or what's what's up, or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. You're just going to make me more annoyed. So don't do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So don't do no, it. No, seriously, it's like ev not everybody is like, yeah, shot out of a cannon 24 7. Some people like me like to be quiet, hang back, have smaller conversations. Right. It's okay. It's not against the law. So don't be drunk and yelling at me that I'm like, a, you know, you're going to break me because I'm, I'm not you're what you think I should be doing. So anyway, okay. uh, so yeah, you were there. Um, so anyway, uh, I have to say that. But like, I, for, like for example, I talked to Dan Padavano for an hour about books, which was delightful. Nice. Yeah. Um, Saturday night, <laughs> me and Phoebe and uh, Summer Cannon and her husband Jesse, who, by the way, they need their own TV show. Yeah, desperately. they do. <laughs> we hung out. They're hysterical. Next to the bar, there was. What like about a, a podcast? Portal, uh, well, if they want to do it, but Armand, yeah. get ready for podcast <laughs> yeah. number twenty-six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously, they are endlessly entertaining, and there was a portable bar right in front of the wall where we were so we were literally ordering yeah. drinks over the wall we scared him yeah we scared the bartender guy but uh those two are hysterical yeah, they are. and various people were wandering out we were doing that then we had the big giant gathering in the writer's room at like one o'clock in the morning which was fun but i don't know about i'm pretty sure a few people agree with me we were both worn out at that point so we're both kind of just well, there, like, and it should be pointed uh, out this year it wasn't just writers the actors joined us yeah down there as well, well. And what's so. funny too is i went out in the hallway at one point because it was really warm in that room and I'm just standing there talking to uh, Ron Malfi. And these people come up, like when Malfi wanders off, people come up and they go, uh, I want to go in there, but I'm not a writer. I'm like, it's okay. You can go in oh. there. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, they were like afraid to go in the room. I'm like, no, 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 go ahead. Because we want to talk to somebody that's in there, but we're scared. I'm like, no, go in. It's fine. You know, it's, it's okay. So that was cool. Uh, 
I Friday night I was the guest Three Guys with Beards with original Three Guys with Beards Jim Moore and also special Three Guys with Beards Bracken McLeod. Uh, nice. And we had a great discussion about movies and books and TV shows and stuff. It's just not planned out at all ahead of time because Bracken was like a late fill in uh, for uh, Jonathan Mayberry. Right. Now, when so. does that air? I don't know because I'm not in charge of their show. So yeah. soon. <laughs> not your network, not, not your show. No, it's not my show. I, I don't know. I do these shows, so I know. I, I know about these shows. I record it for him. Did uh, Jim sound good? Yes, it, I said it. I said during the show, this will be the first three guys with beards where you can understand Jim more. And Tommy Clark <laughs> got all mad at me, and I'm like, hey. it's not his fault. Well, I don't know whose fault is. Jim needs to not be in his barrel. He was not in his barrel tonight. So, uh, so, and we 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 had a great discussion there. And then, of course, Friday night later. We did our horror show live broadcast with uh, actor John, John Anderson, Anderson, who is my new one best friend. of the Aww. greatest guests we've yes, ever had absolutely. on this show. People, I'm telling you, that I think the interview is going to play the week of Killer Con. Uh, you guys are going to definitely want to hear this because it was hilarious. Yeah. So Mary, yeah. uh, Mary and I invited uh, him and his girlfriend up here. They, like They have an open invite. Yeah. So I'm sure we will have John back on oh, the show at some is, point. He is absolutely, yeah. absolutely entertaining. I fuck, you know you meet these people in life and you just feel like an instant brotherhood, an instant yes, kinship yeah. with them. That, that's me and this dude, man. I, you know, and we I, have I, the same birthday. He um, and I. Yeah. So Phoebe, you were you were in the studio. I, yeah. Dave, while Dave was guest hosting Three Guys with Beards, I guest hosted an episode of John Urban Six Instincts, and oh. you were in the studio while we were recording it. The yes. story. Spoiler oh. warning: the the second story that I read that takes place at a convention. That's the convention I met John Anderson at. Oh, that's cool. And. Uh, no, oh, I loved hanging out with him, man. He's just, he is cool as shit. Yeah, that, that episode was great. So that was a lot of fun. Obviously, Friday was very stressful for me and Phoebe because we had equipment to break up and take apart and set up like twice. So that was yeah, a little I'm disconcerting. A but yeah, no, we were, had it all worked out and worked really well. Uh, I bought 16 books at the show. Um, so you got to learn a trick where you get people to give them to you for free. <laughs> Nobody gives me anything. Uh, so anyway, uh, I met the Grindhouse people, including my favorite person on social media, C.V. Hunt. Oh, who's she's hilarious. so hilarious. Yep. All the Grindhouse people were uh, all those people were a lot of fun to hang out with and talk to. Uh, Scott Cole wrote a book about porn and axe murder, and I'm like, I must buy this. <laughs> you know, I, I heard that description. Triple axe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so I finished I, it last I got week. That. I, you know, I bought a bunch of books. Of this this hack named Hayward was there, and I bought some of his stuff. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. No. Yeah. No, he's, he's yeah, that guy's a joke. Anyway, and uh, I picked on West Southern a lot because that's always fun. And Kozanewski, uh, it was just you know, uh, you know, I a lot of people were asking me how I'm feeling. I'm feeling fine. You know, I, I talked about online on Facebook a week before about my kidney disease and where I'm at right now. Um, so you know, I, I other people were asking me about that. I had a really long conversation with a couple of people about it. Um, I'm doing all right. You know, it's it's inevitable that someday I will need a transplant, but the idea is to hold off as long as possible. So that's what we're working on right now. Or kidnap somebody. Or well, that too. Or you know, yeah. So there's always that option. Oh my! But because uh, somebody <laughs> at one point a doctor was asking me like, "Do you know anybody you can ask for a kidney transplant?" And I'm like, "I can't ask somebody to take me to the airport. I'm going to start a transplant." But I'm also thinking, all the people I know, the way they drink, I don't want any of their organs. Here's a, here's a yeah. question. Now, I, I, if you're a new listener. I'm not asking this sexist. It's just that I'm old, and I'm also not very smart. I'm not very bright, so I don't know if it matters or not. Gender doesn't matter in no, a kidney no. transplant, right? No, it's, so it's we could... Thing. I'm trying to think of somebody we use in this. We could kidnap Elizabeth Gray from Archive of Spe- on Sexy Witches. We could steal one of her kidneys <laughs> and put it in you. I, I that's. I'm not going to... No. I, no? Uh, no. You don't no. want that kidney? I, I offered, I offered no. Dave one of my kidneys. Yeah. I'm not so sure that I really want it, but well, I mean, a couple I think people, I have two, a couple don't people I? made that offer, and and I'm always like, well, that's really nice, but I can't imagine anybody actually doing that. I would give you a kidney, would you? Yeah. I okay. Would. Well, we'll yeah. hopefully this. Let's we, just be we're. positive. Yes, it, I know. Phoebe I'm positive to, I'd give him a kidney. Yeah. Well, Phoebe. I appreciate Phoebe likes that. to do the la 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 la. No, 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 no. no. Let's just keep yeah. positive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go positive then. Let's talk about Matt Hayward's positive scares the care experience. I love that it was. It's. It's so much like a family reunion for us every time we come over. And then, for example, me and Mike Lombardo typically close out the convention every night. We stay up until early hours of the morning before we ever get to bed. We sleep about two We average about two hours a night. Right. Then me and Pat launched practitioners at it. Right. Seeing that sell out was mind-blowing. Um, going down to Lombardo's house, seeing Jesus' car. Right. All this kind of stuff. There's too much to name, and I think it takes a few days to absorb everything and then reflect on it. Yeah, Dave, you'll appreciate this. So, of course, now, now you know, 
one of uh, one of Matt's influences was, of course, our dear friend Jesus yeah. Gonzalez, JF Gonzalez. Um, Matt spends the night at Lombardo's last night. We've talked in the show. Lombardo inherited Jesus's car. Mm-hmm. When Jesus has passed, Lombardo got the car. I saw a picture today of Matt mm-hmm. and Lombardo sitting in Jesus's car. Oh wow! It gave me all That's the fucking cool. feels, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just cool to see him having that car, you know, yeah. and that it still runs and. So yeah, that's great. So it's like you see your brothers in arms. At yes, this place. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then and then the the welcome to the show panel that yeah. was amazing, and then being with everyone who's in the well, most of the authors who were in the anthology, being there with them when we when it hits the charts, getting yeah. to gauge it on the first day, watching the reviews come in, and being able to, for example, turn to Kelly and say, "Hey, have you seen the new review?" And then everybody's throwing it around, and right. that was it. That was amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's sold out at the convention. The dealers sold out all sold their out copies. Sold out completely. I had one contributor copy on my table. I went to use the bathroom, and when I came back, it was gone, and there was <laughs> money on the table. Wow. Yeah. So we have honest thieves. They pay. <laughs> yeah. They paid for it. I mean, that's unusual. Yeah. I so think th- I signed more copies of that than anything I brought. Anything, any of my other books. I signed a lot of copies. Yeah. Yeah, I just flat signed him because I, I, yeah, but, and, and yeah, we should, you know, I was going to say it for the interview, but fuck it, we're, we, we have an opening here. You hit the bestseller list, Matt. Your first anthology. You outsold Stephen King. Woo! How, yo, that's got to feel really good, right? Uh, Everything just feels strange. It feels like a dream. Until we get home, then I'm probably going to wake up screaming in the middle of the night. We'll see. (laughs) That's, that's what I wonder. And I always, I always think of, you know, me and Mary's dear friend, Tim Levin, who he was sort of our Matt Hayward back in the day because he had a funny <laughs> accent. And he had to travel a long way to see us as well. Uh, you but, all have the accent. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Tim would come over here where it's his tribe and and people were into the shit. And then he'd have to go back to Wales. And it's just like him and Simon Clark in Wales. Do you feel distance when you're in Ireland? Completely. Do you feel distance from all these things happening? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So wow! Well, I'm glad it all happened while you were here, stateside yeah. man. Me too. Man. So, so Phoebe, what about you? Scares of care. Well, you guys put me to work. <laughs> yes, it and was a, it was a working trip. See we, what we have over here? We have a horror show inventory. That's interviews that we uh-huh. have in the can to pull uh-huh. out. Uh, we have Poltergeist pressed. We have actor John Anderson, which we'll hear next week. Uh-huh. We have. Uh, apparently, you did a forty-minute interview with John Urbansick. We had a lovely, really lovely, deep conversation. Right. And I have down. I have written down Phoebe Unleashed yes. Two. Yeah. Tell me about Phoebe Unleashed Two. So, am I allowed to tell you what the question is? Yes. So the question was, and we can go around the table and answer if you want to. Um, but actually, I already talked to Marion. Well, Brian can give his answer. Yeah, we didn't talk to Brian. Yeah. Best death. A fictional death in a book or movie or comic book. Exorcist 3, the hallway scene. <gasps> oh, See, it's line. so funny because good either line. people, boom, knew it right off the top of their head or they had to think about it. Personally, I don't have one, although... If you want me to pick book... Pick a book. Uh, the way, uh, the way uh, Larry Underwood and uh, not Glenn Bateman... Who was the big corn husker motherfucker that died with Larry Underwood uh, in the stand? God damn it! I just read it in the Burn Ward too. Yeah, I know. I know the good old boy. Yeah. The way they go out in Las Vegas. Yeah. Because that took balls. Yeah. It and was, Steve, I know you're listening. That, that that's still your best death scene ever. It was so interesting because I think it depended what words I used because the first people I talked to were Rio, yours, and Ron Malfi. And they both gave me books. And real yours was like, boom, I know exactly. And that one was quite entertaining. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not giving no, Wait, what good. day did you interview Rio and Ron? Friday. So it was before they were drunk. No, Saturday. Yeah. Oh, they so they, drunk. Okay. oh they yes, drunk. they were. By Saturday, oh, they yeah. were. At the table? Oh, when yeah. They were selling oh, books? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They Malfi they had a and Rio had, had a cooler. cooler. They were pretty yeah. much drunk from the time they got there. It's Rio. <laughs> <laughs> it's Malfi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It they, they was a very lovely. They were my first interviews. Yeah, they were lovely. They Did were. any of you see Rio twerking on the the Lost Highways panel? <laughs> no, I um, I saw him twerking on me in the dealer's room. Oh my goodness! But mm-hmm. the only panel I made it to was uh, Bob Ford's reading. Oh yeah, which is the second best reading he's ever done. He will never top the suicide reading. 
that's not humanly possible. <laughs> but he wrote this piece specifically to perform it as opposed to read it. Oh, right, right. And it was a really good idea. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. It's it's actually it's on uh, Facebook. So yeah. we videoed it. And it's up on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, nice. and Bob posted. So if you weren't as reading, go go watch it. It's really cool. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's the only thing I, I managed to catch. So it was really cool to talk to people. Um, I Did, talked. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you get any more long interviews, or is John the only long? Um, one? you know, I talked to Kyle Liebeck. Okay. For short, just I wanted to talk to him about the book that he released last year. Right. And it was. Um, a story about a Vietnam vet and right. that was and his dad is a Vietnam vet and he shared that with me when I talked last year briefly and I never got a chance to follow up with him so I just wanted to to, to have him share with me how his father's experiences and you know the things that he shared with him really personal stories impacted him in writing the book and it was really it was really nice it was it was cool. You know what? Good job, Phoebe. Hey. I am fucking proud of you. I think your Bansic interview. I was honestly, I was just talking to John to ask him the question of the day, and we just went down a merry little lane, and we had a Wait, great here, conversation. Let's, let's recapture. It. Pretend. <laughs> uh, go ahead. You, you're interviewing John now. Well, what's your favorite death? Oh, my favorite death. I mean. <laughs> First one has to define death. What is death? <laughs> I like that Matt just immediately knows where my head's going. And he starts up with the, the PBS jazz. Hey. Because what is death is really, uh, it's, it's interpersonal and transcendental at the same time. Well, the only, the only background death music. Death can be in color or black and white or oh psychedelic. God. We had a really good conversation. Well, good. Now I'm looking forward no, to hearing it. No, it's really, it. and he, it was cool. Good. Yeah. Mary, what about you? Oh, let's see. Uh, I very much enjoyed Kosniewski's reading and Summer's reading. Yes, that was very good. That uh, that was, I think, Summer's fantastic. first reading ever. Yeah. Summer's very first reading, uh, which I I'm still not sure I believe because. Right. Um, well, quite, I, the only reason I believe is because I saw how nervous she was oh, beforehand. Quite honestly, she, like, she, she nailed she it. She did well enough she that next it. year I'm either going to put her with Bob Ford or Tom Monteleone. We yeah, told her to go did, first. That's, <laughs> that's how well she yeah. did. And uh, Kozanewski's was hysterical. Yeah. It was, it was everything. If you've ever done a reading, it, it's everything. He also, that, he also like Bob, he did a he performance He did a performance piece. kind of thing. Yeah. But it's everything that you've ever experienced at a reading, especially as the reader, you know. Um... I liked getting to talk to people and hang out with people that I don't usually get to see. Uh, and and meeting new people. I thought Aaron was very funny. Aaron, Aaron Dries. Dries. Aaron Dries, who we've done ads for on the show before. And we finally got to meet him in person. Aaron Dries. Well, we met him Rhymes in person at Nikon, but we <laughs> yes. saw him again at you know, Somebody pointed out to him that all his titles rhyme with his name. <laughs> House of Size, Aaron Dries. Oh, and, my God. Yeah. I've never noticed yeah. that. Oh, that's funny. That's actually good, though. Oh. Uh, it was just it was nice catching up with people that I don't get to see that often and and you know and Matt and I were talking the other night about how it's 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 very satisfying but still a little strange to have people come up and be like yeah you know I, I read all your books or you know this was really inspiring to me or you know this was this was really cool I, I, I like this particular book and that particular book and like there's a part of me that still kind of wants to be like why <laughs> there's so many better books you could be reading than me why are you reading me but I appreciate that people are reading me, and you know, and and that was just kind of a nice, you know, sort of nice to know that people are enjoying what's going on out there. And we sold a lot of books. That was nice. That's, That's always, always nice. You know, so it was, yeah, it was, and it was just, it was, it was a good weekend. It was a nice weekend. John, uh, John Urbansick and and James Moore and I were talking Sunday, because um, you know the old world horror conventions back in the late '90s, yeah. early aughts. There were a bunch of us that would always stay up Saturday night. All night. And we yep. would refuse to go to sleep, you know, and we'd get Regina Mitchell onto her bus. One time we got you to the airport, you know, we just, we yeah. stayed awake. Um, and no matter who fell, it was always Coop, Urban Sick, Mikey Hike, Mike Oliveri, and myself, and occasionally Jesus, who were still awake into Sunday. Right. And uh, John and I both, we were, we were watching Matt, who's here in studio, and Lombardo. And Aaron Dries do that 
Saturday night, mm-hmm. and it was just, it was like, oh. The torch has been passed. <laughs> I, I, other than that one time that you guys had to get me to the airport. Yeah, you never made it to Sunday morning. No, no. Sephra no. Um, <laughs> made it with us one night. Wait, let me rephrase that. She didn't make it with Giggity. us. She <laughs> stayed up all night with all of us once. Yes. I think, I think we probably all took a turn once, but we were like, fuckers are crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but, we gotta sleep sometime. Yeah, she, was, she, was the only, she was the only woman who ever managed to stay. And I don't mean that in a sexist way. I just mean I, I think most of y'all ran screaming. I mean, no, you, I you and Gina time. tried. Yeah, no, I did the one time because yeah. I had to get to the airport. But, uh, and I've done it at Nikon. That also sounded wrong. Nikon doesn't count. Everyone stays awake there. But <laughs> how about Kelly? Kelly, do you wish to, to borrow Phoebe's microphone and or, or Mary's microphone and tell us about your scares of care experience? You can get up here. Here she comes to the microphone, ladies and gentlemen. Get Kelly off. Kelly Owen. She's Her and Mary are doing, speaking of twerking, I... What kind of maneuver was that? I, yeah. I don't know. It was dirty and wonderful. As it often is with us, Kelly. All right. Two ships Two passing in the hall as closely as they can. All right. Here's your microphone. Hello. Hello. Um, scares the Cures was awesome. Uh, what was the question? We were over there yeah, having was, a moment. What was your What was your experience? It was great. It was yeah. awesome. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who brought me trinkets because that was really new and exciting this year and I thought that was so cool and Awesome and unexpected. Oh, but I want to tell you about my favorite moment. Okay. Yes, so, that's why we have you on mic right now. So, <laughs> I did a coloring book this year. <clears throat> the Atrocious yes, you Alphabet, with, which with I'm sitting too like close Chris to Enterline. Phoebe. I'm sitting way too close to Phoebe for this moment. <clears throat> um, okay, forgive me for, for D, okay? Because she comes up to me singing A, B, C, D. Dead dog, and then she chased me. No, it so was, D was of course a dead dog. Obviously, yeah, there was a dog. Dismembered on the page. dog. It was. I was in trouble. But so it's it's not for kids. It's no. a horrible, horrible coloring book. It's a wonderful thing. It comes with crayons because I'm 12. And my favorite thing was these two older women oh. came over, uh-huh. and they were looking at it and they were laughing hysterically, having a grand old time, and said, "We have to get this." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, cool. This is so cool for our mom." <laughs> oh my god how old is mom so now i have this vision <laughs> of this tiny little old woman in a home somewhere coloring these awful pictures and probably doesn't remember who gave her the book or why they would give her this book but they were like no she loves to color things and so yeah how old is mom <laughs> maybe that's just for their enjoyment i don't know but i thought it was great <laughs> we gotta get this for mom it's like what wait wait really no, they were totally serious. That's perhaps an untapped market, the uh, the retirement community. I, I haven't, yeah, I, yeah, ha- I haven't stores. marketed them at yeah, all. Yeah, no, well, I think no. you need to look, tap into that. They might be into I it. I mean, what yeah. was the last thing that did? I think I, the movie Cocoon was may, the last may, thing may, that, may. that tapped into yeah. that. Might be some good distribution for you. Yeah, <laughs> new distribution. Maybe I'll just send some yeah. out to you know, oh, like some a of donation, the a like charitable, a charitable project. Thing. <laughs> Here, have some coloring books, you know, because I'm pretty sure the doctor's offices won't take them. Yeah. Ba- based on my experiences at those those places, uh, you need more racist act. Coloring activities for those people to to fill in. Uh, I don't have any. Well, I know, I, well I'm saying. Well, yeah. and Chris Chris Enterline did the uh, illustrations in it, and you heard this poem once upon a time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I read right this. It was, it was it was an alphabet poem mm-hmm. that I've had for years. Yeah. And originally we were just going to make it a chapbook, and he sent me back the first page, and I was like, oh my god, hold everything, make it bigger, kill the coloring, thin out the lines. We're making a coloring book. So I was all <laughs> excited about it, and then I started looking at it, going. Wait, I got to redo two of these pages because society will hunt me down and kill me yeah. if I keep these the way they originally mm-hmm. were. Because they were not PC. No, they were horrible. Yeah. They were, I mean, because it's, you know, awful. It's us. <laughs> and it's us. And so, yeah, now it's more PC, but they're still dead dogs. You told me. We talked. There's no dog. They didn't hurt any animals. Everything's You fine. asked me if I hurt any animals in the novel. Well, yeah, but you didn't say you hurt something in the Coloring book. She slaughtered them. Did you get them. to teeth? I, it's awful. No, I didn't get to teeth yet. T. Oh, the teeth. The turtle. Oh, turtle. The turtle. The turtle. He's going to be tortured eventually, but you said he's not touching him. I'm, I'm not, not touching, touching you. you. <laughs> so, you know, I, it's a cool I'm coloring book, though. You. It's really, it's a, definitely a, a grown-up coloring it. book. We had a lot, a lot of fun with it. So, what else did you enjoy? Um, let's see here. I enjoyed sitting next to Malfi and Rio. 
Was that entertaining? Well, no, see, when we walked in the first day and I started to pull all my books down and I looked at who's around me, uh-huh. how are we sitting this year? And I looked to my left and went, really? Melfi and Rio are at the same table. I'm the good kid this weekend. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to get in any trouble because these two are next to each other. And they did. They had a cooler under the table. I was I tripping s- over beer bottles. That's amazing. But, now, they, but they were fun. Yeah. And then the boys, oh, and the juvenile boys that I was surrounded by were passing notes like eighth graders. Really? Yes, they were. And <laughs> Robert Ford started it. Oh, my God. In his kilt. He only wore the kilt the one day. And um, he's not used to wearing a kilt. So I'm really glad that when... The video started on his reading. I had already told him to shut his legs. Yeah, they don't understand. You got to sit like you, a you lady. You can't sit like that. Cause I walked or don't in. go regimental. Well, I walked in for the reading, got to the back of the room, looked up and went, oh, and I'm going like this in the back of the room, flapping my hands together like, you need to shut your knees. Aren't you supposed to wear underwear under a kilt? No. 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 Yeah, I don't wear regimental. underwear under mine. No. 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 If no. you wear underwear under it, it's... Nor did I wear it under my tights during the telethon. I'm well, well aware of this. Ew. So am I. <laughs> how are you aware of it, Dave? You shoved your fucking cock right in my face. How would I not be aware of it? I was there for that. <laughs> well, then how are you aware of it, Kelly? Heart, I was there for that. You put your leg... You did like the Captain Morgan up on one of the chairs. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah right. we know what religion you are, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. All right. This is why I go to therapy. But... You should just cut that joke off there. We should. <laughs> We All right. Just stop there. Before, Here, before we get to the interview with Matt. Now, Matt and Anna brought us a gift all the way from Ireland. Now, this is something, Dave, that I have read about online, but I've never been able to get it here in the States. Um, it's a double barrel Irish whiskey aged first <laughs> in bourbon barrels and then finished in sherry barrels. Okay. Are you a sherry fan? No. I don't know that I've ever had sherry. Uh, it, but I, I sweet. Like, it, yeah, Is it, it sweet? I, I don't mm-hmm. like sweet wine at all. But I, I know I will I will mangle the pronunciation. Matt, how is uh, this pronounced? <laughs> Glendalock. Glendalock. And, 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 and thank you for this gift. I think that we should, it's only fitting. Do it. Uh, that we open this here yes. live on the air. Yes. And that Matt get the first sip out of J.F. Gonzalez's whiskey glass. Yes. Absolutely. So, I see. Wow. You're just giving me another reason to wake up screaming when I get home. <laughs> no, I was looking at the bottle. I'm like, it's Jesus whiskey. I thought it was Jesus on the front, but it's a guy with a f- bird head. That's St. Kevin. <laughs> oh, it's St. Kevin. St. Kevin. St. Yes. Kevin. Wait, wait, wait. St. Kevin? Mm-hmm. That's right, because isn't he the, uh, isn't that where the... He's a patron saint the... of something or other. <laughs> patron saint of bird-headed people? Oh, but that's where the monastery yeah. is, yeah. right? That, that reminds me... Um, Phoebe's description of Jesus, not Jesus there reminded me of something. Jesus, not Jesus. For those at Scares of Cares who are witnesses to Phoebe describing a movie that apparently only Phoebe has seen in her <laughs> alternate <laughs> dimension of Phoebe land, uh, the answer was cold in July. Now, what Phoebe described is in a movie that does not exist. The Joe R. Lansdale yes. movie? Yes. Yeah. This is her description. I wish I had this recorded because I will not do as good as her. There's a guy and he goes somewhere... And he, and, and he has money, and then they make him make a fake snuff film to blackmail him, and and it's the guy from Criminal Minds. And I'm like, what the hell movie is that? And and there was a whole gathering of people, like Mike Lombardo, and people that know a lot about movies. Yeah. Matt no, Blasi. None of us understood this. And I said, this I have to deal with this on a daily basis. I'll figure it out. It took me three days. Well, I, when oh, I, my yeah. God. This smells amazing. Yeah. <laughs> which, uh, which guy from Criminal Minds? It's not. It it's, it's Dexter. It was the Dexter now, guy. Matt. This is this is J.F. Gonzalez's whiskey glass. How I'm not even allowed to touch this glass. Give me a tipple. A tipple? A little bit. Yeah. Now, what does a tipple mean just, in Ireland? Just, just a two finger? two, fingers. two fingers. Two fingers. All right. I like tipple better. I like tipple. Tipple sounds We're dirty. It does sound a little dirty. I think right? I just invented right. it. I don't know like if it's someone's going to rub your right. tipple. We're adopting Pass that it. down to Matt. It's tippling. We're all touching Matt's now, tipple I'm, right I'm now. I'm making myself a tipple. Okay. Oh, you're going to tipple yourself? Ooh, giggity. <laughs> a lot right. of tipple- a lot of tippelation going on here. Cheers, buddy. Slancha. Ah, slancha. Slancha. I'm practicing. Wow. Listeners, this it is smells an unpaid pretty. for it does. It advertisement. But yeah, if you if you have access to Glendalock, 
double did I say that right? Glendalock, right? Glendalock, yeah. yeah. Double barrel Irish whiskey. Get yourself some because wow. That is amazing. And that is gonna go quick, Dave. So <laughs> I, I just want to look at Jesus, not Jesus on the the, the label. Something there. else you should get is the strange case at Misty Ridge by David Bryan, a supernatural cosmic horror mystery uh that is on sale right now uh the book was inspired in part by the works of william hope hodgson uh the paperback is available wherever books are sold and the ebook is exclusive on amazon kindle and can currently be read for free if you have a kindle unlimited subscription and my apologies my sincere apologies to david bryan for phoebe and mary giggling <laughs> through that ad copy we giggled very quietly. It. it was a silent giggle, like it was a quiet giggle. What the fuck are you two doing? She there. poured the wine, glug glug glug. <laughs> giggle because she's drinking like a non-alcoholic fish. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been on the show together in a while. I'm gonna be so <laughs> not toasted. <laughs> be in so much trouble is what's gonna happen. I vote we do match episode next week. Yeah. Show here. I, I just want to point out I have to live with this. Well, that's not nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, just, I just want to point out solidarity. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I just want to point out Kelly's the quiet one. Yeah, Kelly. <laughs> props to Kelly Owen. She's the quiet one this, this episode. That's like Dave. a sign of the apocalypse, right? You know, pretty much death is on, <laughs> on the street. It has to be. Yeah. Well, no. Looking forward to the right. interview, Look, and we'll behave. I, we I, always behave. I would like to get serious now, and I think Matt would like to get yeah. serious yeah. now. Um, I hope you're happy, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt Hayward. Okay. Musician, writer, budding artist. Because yes, I've done my homework. He's looking at me like, how the fuck does he know about the art thing? <laughs> What was your very first love as a kid? Music or reading? A bit of both, but it was always... Um, music was always the thing I gravitated towards. Yeah. Reading was something that was a constant, but didn't become serious until I was a teenager. Right. And then, so I had always read, but music was the first love. So music was what you were getting your comfort from as a yeah. kid. Yeah. Yeah. Any favorites from back then? A lot of the Seattle stuff, yeah. blues, a lot of 60s rock. Yeah. Black Sabbath were my first um, foray into rock music. Who, who my, turned you on to Sabbath? My dad had a hammock that stretched across the middle of his room. And when I went to visit him, he had the stack of old records. And there was the Beatles, Roy Gallagher, stuff like this. And then I find this black album cover with purple writing. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Right. So I put it on and I hear Ozzy coughing. And Sweet Leaf came on. Right. And the hair on my arms just... And that was... I was done. Yeah. Gone. Wow. I was probably about seven. Yeah, seven, seven years old. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dungeon, yeah, that's about the age Dungeon Master discovered Sabbath, too. So... It's a pivotal moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, do you still get those goosebumps every oh, yeah. time you hear Sweet Leaf? Yeah. Yeah. And probably you associate that with your dad, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, a lot of the Seattle stuff... How old are you? 28. 28. So you're still a relatively young guy, which fascinates me, Mary, and I'm going to tell you why as we get into this interview. Please. So you discover music, you discover Sabbath, age seven. What age do you pick up a guitar for the first time? 13. 13 years yeah. old. Now, were you self-taught? Did you take lessons? Completely self-taught. Yeah? Yeah. There was a, there was a drunkard who lived on my street. <laughs> <laughs> and he had this old guitar. And we used to go down to him because he would give us cigarettes. And I was in his house one day and I saw this old beat up acoustic. Right. And it had two strings on it or something. And he goes, did you play? And I said, no, I've never played in my life. And he goes, take it. I was just battered old worn thing. And then my mother restrung it for me. And I tried to play, but my fingers were, you know, bleeding and stuff. And I decided, somebody told me that there's not enough bass players. You can throw a stone, you'll hit five guitars in the head. Right. So pick up the bass. So then Christmas when I was 13, I got a bass guitar. So started there. Wow. Started there. Yeah. And always self-taught. Yeah. Can you read music or no? No. no. Basic, but we had to do it in school. Yeah. So I kind of picked it up there, but no. Well, I mean, you listen to the show. You know that I, too, am a self-taught <laughs> self guitarist. Uh, Rob Herrera's custom-made harsh show at Brian King guitar. Rob, I know you listen every week. You'll be delighted to know. That, that Matt was, in fact, playing the guitar you made for us earlier in the week. 
Um, so you're playing music at 13. You're reading. Did you ever try writing around that age too, or, or were you mostly focused on music? I did, and I freaked out a few teachers because I always wrote fiction. Right. And when they would ask for an essay, and they give you a title and say, "Go home, write five pages." With this title, I would go home and write like a fantasy story. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like skeletons and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So Right. So, yeah, I was writing, but I never really thought of it as a possible career choice or anything mm. like that. It was just a hobby. Yeah. Uh, but funny enough, how did I think music would ever be a career <laughs> choice? <laughs> <laughs> but you draw, too. And I know this because mm -hmm. I saw a doodle in there. I thought Dungeon Master drew it, and I, I, because he's pretty accomplished. I, I, I said, "Who did this?" He said, "Matt drew it for Mary." And do you know what doodle I'm talking about? Yes, Mary? I do. Yes, it I is do. really good. It is very good. I had no idea that you could draw. I so, didn't even know I drew something. That must have been when we were. No, <laughs> oh, oh, yes. You were way into the whiskey by that point. Yeah. yeah you're just like a little zombie guy. Is it good? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah, it's very we'll good. We'll show you when we go inside. Thank you. You know, if, the, if this writing and music rock star thing doesn't work out, you could probably get a job as a, a cartoonist. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it looks like? Those little plants versus zombies. It looks like one of those little zombie oh, yeah. guys. Yeah, it's really cute. All right, so he's 28, Dave. Mm -hmm. All right, so picture this. The year is 2010. Matt and his partners, they form a band called Lay Sweeper. Uh, you know, critically raved about in ireland they released three studio eps one live ep two singles including i'm i'm sure you've heard this dave their cover of mother love bones crown of thorns right. um kevin wood of malfunction andrew wood's brother uh played lead guitar on that uh matt also has jack dog a blues rock side project uh they released a debut ep called good riddance while on tour for Malfunction's 33rd anniversary in 2013, Matt joins former Nirvana drummer Chad Channing on stage at Studio 7 in Seattle as a special guest. Um, Matt joins Malfunction again a year later in 2014 at the Mike Star of Alice in Chains Memorial Show in Tacoma. All right, so this is a kid playing with, with Chad Channing, playing Mike Star's Memorial. Um, you know, Matt, you've written and recorded with various bands, notable musicians, including Edie Brickell uh, and My Sister's Machine singer Nick Pollock. And then you just walk away from it all. And if I, if I may, if you will indulge me, I know it's your interview and I'm talking a lot, but I just want to read the intro that I wrote for Matt's story in Clickers Forever, a tribute to J.F. Gonzalez, okay? Because, because this is... This is it right here. Um, I wrote, Musician Matt Hayward has a true story he calls Finding Jesus, or Finding Jesus. <laughs> In his own words, quote, I was making good money touring Ireland, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Then my bandmates quit and left me alone. I moved back to my hometown and got a job mopping floors at the school I went to as a kid. I went home each night just wanting to disappear. Then, one night, I decide to look for something to read. Something like Stephen King, but with some B-rate gore. Google led me to Clickers. Each night, that book took me away, and without it, I wouldn't be here. End quote. Now, think about Aww. that, and then think about today he's riding around in Jesus' car with, with a young man who is his brother, a young man who Jesus considered very much a son. Um full fucking circle matt then goes on to say quote i looked at the nirvana alice in chains and guns and roses posters on my wall and i thought to myself that at least one member in each of those bands bands knows me and respects me for my work not bad for an irish fuck from the middle of nowhere then i looked at my bookshelf and saw jf gonzalez brian keen and brian smith they'll know my name too i can do it again and so I got to work, end quote. And that is where this interview really begins, because, because you got to work. You say it yourself. Um, what year was that? That would have been 2014, I would say. 2014. Right in there, yeah. Here we are four years later. Remember this, Dave. Four years time, all right? Um, you know, you started off placing stories in Dark Moon Digest, the Horror Zine. You know, around 2015, you start yeah, getting published. Yeah. Um, 
what came first for you, short stories, or had you started fooling around with the novel? I had started a novel until I realized how much work goes into a novel. When right. you start writing, you assume you can do it. Yeah. You assume that, you know, I'll at least attempt a novel without realizing the work count, the amount of work that goes mm -hmm. into that. So I took a little bit of a break. I bought a bunch of novels on writing, and I made sure to study them day in, day out. And I would not submit anything until I knew it was at least up to a certain degree where it wouldn't be laughed out the door, pretty much. Right. So I started with short stories, and um, I'd say within six months of that it was going okay and i had a couple of things published then i felt comfortable to go for a novel now was that novel what do monsters fear or did you have a trunk novel before i that? had four novels before you this. had four trunk wow. novels mm -hmm. over four years time yeah holy shit how how many words do you write a day on average a thousand words a day every day a thousand words a day every day yeah. four novels one novel a year yeah and then brain dead blues as well so that's another right yeah. So there you go, perseverance. A thousand words a day, every day. That's all it takes, folks. Um, so, did you try submitting any of the novels before What the Monsters Fear, or did you did, know they weren't yeah. quite there? I did try submitting them, but then when I when they saw that they were getting rejected, I stopped. I wasn't ready to, you know, try self publish or try talk someone into publishing it because I wanted this the work to speak for itself. So I knew they weren't ready. Right. So I try one. It wouldn't work. I made sure I gave it its proper dues. Didn't just send it to one or two. I sent it around. Right. Tried a second one. Didn't work. Didn't try to go back and, you know, keep trying it. I just right. kept going on to the next one until I landed one. Right. Do you ever consider going back now that you're stronger as a writer, going back and revising them and making them publishable? I did do one that's coming out in October. That was the second thing I'd ever written. Is that the, uh, the Faithful? It is the Faithful. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you went back and revised it heavily. Completely rewrote it. Yeah. yeah. Did you keep anything or just a complete gut it? And it was there, but it was there on a surface value. I needed the subtext. Right. I didn't have the subtext yet. And I, like, um, in one of those things on writing, I think it was Tom Picker really says that the story's dead until you give it a heart. If it doesn't have a heart, exactly. it, you don't put it out. <laughs> so I didn't have the heart yet. And I knew that, so I, I trunked it. Wow. So you sell your first novel, What Do Monsters Fear? You know, you sell it to a small press. Um, you probably didn't have high expectations because you were a reader. And the fact that you're reading myself, Jeff Gonzalez, Brian Smith, you, you, you know, I know the to deal. expect for small press. Yeah. Um, so then the Bram Stoker Award process starts. Now, I hope I don't embarrass you telling this, you, this on the air. But, you know, you text me, oh, hey, I got recommended for a Stoker Award. And I text you back, okay, don't get excited. Yeah. Don't go run around screaming your fucking head off. You're going to look like an idiot. Don't get excited, you know. Then the preliminary ballot process starts, and you text me again. Hey, I made the preliminary ballot. And you I know, you know what's fun about this? What? Every time you would send back, don't get excited. I was like, just wait for my next text, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And this is exactly what happened. Yeah, preliminary ballot. I said, yep. don't get excited. Uh, when the final ballot comes out, he texts me. Hey, I made the final ballot, and I text him back. I said, now you can get excited. <laughs> okay, but that's four years time. Did it seem surreal? Completely. I thought it was a joke because I'm not a member of the Horror Writers Association. So when Patrick Lacey texts me, say, he would tell me updates on it all. Right. He would go, you know, you made the preliminaries. I go, well, what does that mean? I don't know the process of it. And he goes, well, it means you're, you have a possibility of making the finalists. But to get narrowed down from the preliminaries to the finalists just seems like a, a million miles away. Right. Then he texts me saying we made the finals. And me and Anna were, we were awake at like four in the morning and we're looking at each other going, he's joking with us. I said, screenshot it. So he screenshot it and he sent it and it just, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, I remember the feeling. You had me beat by one year. It was five years from my first published short story to the Stoker Award for The Rising. So you beat me by one year. You beat my record, Matt Hayward. <laughs> but I didn't win the Stoker, so you beat well, me. Well, you know, you, look. You I know, still you, haven't won You know Stoker. what that is? You know what that is up there? That, like that's something that I have to fucking dust around every week when I clean in here. No, I, I kid. Look, it's obviously it's an honor. But you have plenty. You've, you've accomplished this in four years. You're going to win all the Stokers. Um, I believe that, you know. So, you know. What do Monsters Fear, uh, Brain Dead Blues, you know, as we said, they're both from small presses. Are you aiming for a big mainstream publisher or Absolutely. are you pretty content in the small press? No, I'm, I always feel like the next release has to be better than the last mm -hmm. in terms of its reach, in terms of your personal progression. So I'm going, I'm trying to go bigger. Yeah. And you're, 
you're not anti self publishing, but you don't feel it's right for you at no, this stage. No. I mean, Brian Smith and stuff can do because they've built up that cult following, but for somebody like me, I think I'd just be doing myself a disservice. Yeah. Even though you met fans at Scares to Care, even though you see there are people who will buy your books regardless of who publishes it. I, w- I would personally hold off on it, yeah. yeah. I respect that. I respect that. Um, you know, you've been at this four years. You've had a taste of the business. We don't have to talk about it on the air, but you know as well as I know there are headaches in publishing. Is it any different than the music business? Did Not you a- flee one headache just to find another? It's a, The music headache was a migraine. <laughs> This is a take two painkillers and you're fine the next week kind of headache. Like, that is the greatest fucking blurb mm. ever. It's absolute truth. Dave, take a note. When we do the best of this year, we have to pull that quote. Yeah. So, um, you know, let's talk about some of the people. You've, because, you know, it's not lost on me. You look up at the shelf. Jeff Gonzalez, Brian Keene, Brian Smith. They're going to know my name and respect my work. Obviously, I know your name. You're sleeping in my house this weekend. I advise you, I respect the hell out of your work. Um, Brian Smith respects you enough that you and he are collaborating. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you right now, and, and Phoebe and Kelly and Mary and Dave can back me up on this, Jesus would have adored you. Yeah, oh, absolutely. yeah. Oh, absolutely. yeah. We would have gotten home, and he would have chatted my fucking ear off. That Irish kid, he was pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, he would have. He would, he he would have adored you. I, you. He would have liked the fact that you don't take any nonsense either because oh, yeah. Jesus never did no. either oh yeah he actually has a lot of Jesus's personality yeah, yeah, yeah he does you know mm-hmm. he's very quiet a little bit of yours too yeah he's like he's like he's like if Jesus and I had a baby <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's gonna be a blurb man. Yeah, there's your blurb <laughs> that's the hard novel here right there <laughs> but you know let's talk about some of the other people you met one of the first people you met in this business was uh artist and writer Alan Clark um, who you have an immense respect for. He ended up doing an album cover for you. Yeah. How did you meet Alan? I added him on Facebook. And he messaged me and he goes, well, how did you find out about me? And I said, well, your artwork's been on my shelf for years and years and years. Right. And he goes, are you right? And I said, yeah. And he goes, you want to fire me over something? So are you sure? And he goes, yep. This would have been, I would have been writing about six months at this point. So I was very unsure of myself. Okay. So I send over the short story. And he critiques it, and he goes, I don't want to write this, get on Skype with me. So I go on Skype with Alan, and he proceeds to give me a two-hour lecture on everything I'm doing wrong. That's he Alan. He goes, <clears throat> take out a notebook, take notes. Took out a notebook, take notes. He goes, go away with everything I've just told you. Come back to me in two weeks. We're going to do this again. Mm-hmm. So I went away, did everything he told me, work up better and better, and then the short story that he helped me on, Mm-hmm. Uh, ended up selling twice, and I had to actually reject one place from it. So that's how much he helped me. That's nice. Alan. I mean, you know, pe- you know, people praise Alan for his artwork. They praise him, praise him for his writing, but he mentors a lot of people. So, you know, he's very involved in the Bizarro community. That's awesome that he did that for you. I don't know if I, I don't know if he wants me saying it, and everybody think he'd be okay with it. He said, you approach me how a child would a father, and that's how I think of you. Aww. So I've always got a special place for Alan. That's awesome. Aww. That's awesome. Shit, that made me cry right now. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, listeners. Um, someone else you met early on, Keelan Patrick Burke. Yeah. Now, how did you two meet? It can't uh, just be the <laughs> Irish thing, right? It's when Keelan... <laughs> when and Keelan, look, okay, Keelan's a dear friend. We've all told our Keelan Patrick Burke drinking stories <laughs> on this show. I don't yeah. think we could legally tell my I don't think <laughs> we could <laughs> legally tell yours, but I mean how did how did you meet Keelan? Obviously drink was involved probably, um, right? Well he was coming he was coming back to Ireland for um he was going back for a trip to see his family again and we had me and my sister run Fright Club in Dublin, which right. is a horror book club. And we've been reading Kin. So I said, Why don't you stop over in Dublin a week early? We'll go to Fright uh, Fright Club, you get to meet everybody. We went to Fry Club, and then we proceeded to go to just lose the next week. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hunter S. Thompson level of nonsense. <laughs> now he this did is uh, that country. He did the the cover to what the paperback of What the Monsters Fear. He did. Yeah. Did you set that up, or did the publisher reach out to him? He owed me. Yeah, <laughs> Keelan owed you. We, that we need, sounds like a story. We need to say no more. You'll notice uh, every one of my self-published books and all of J.F. Gonzalez's books also feature Keel and Patrick Burke because I have incriminating photographs. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
So, I mean, four years in, Alan Clark is taking you under the wing like a son. Keelan is losing an entire week with you and I. <laughs> you know, Brian Keene is telling you, calm the fuck down about the Stoker Awards. In collaboration with Brian Smith. Collaborating with Brian Smith. And then Edward Lee writes me a fucking forward. Yeah. <laughs> Surreal. Uh, can, like I'm still just saying it out loud. It sounds like a bucket list that you're trying to put together, but these are actually things that have happened. Right. right. So that's. Is it different than appearing on stage with Chad, or is it is it or is it similar? Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think it is about your character that this keeps happening to you? And I'm not even being a smartass. Cause, I mean, that's that's incredible that you keep meeting your heroes like this, and they, and they respect you, and they and they want to work with you. I mean, I. I I suppose I that's, up, that's, up, that's up for them to decide. That's up for them to but decide. But the, the one thing I will say is I won't approach someone with an ulterior motive. Right. I won't approach Keelan with the intent to get him to make me a, a cover. <clears throat> I approach Keelan because I like his work and I want to learn from him. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I'm not going to force a story of mine onto him. I'm not going to try to get anything out of him. Right. Well, I mean, I can't speak for Alan or Keelan or, or, or anyone, but I, I can say for me personally, it's just that. You're no bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can't tell you how many people, um, you know, uh, approach me with, I'm a fan of yours, so you should help me out. Or, I backed your Kickstarter, you should help me out. Or, you know, things of that nature. Um, and, the, you know, they can insinuate themselves into your life. You've never done that to me. You're, you're no bullshit. Hi, I'm a fan. Uh, I'm a writer. You know. Well, the, the one the one thing about you was I the only reason I wrote out reached out to you is because I did a remaster of your first show to show you that if you wanted that done yep. I could do that for you. Yep. I made an offer. I made a point. Unfortunately, I would have had to fire Dave. So <laughs> <laughs> Dave didn't know this. I don't <laughs> no, I did. So I don't talk to Matt. <laughs> Dave, I brought whiskey. We can come on. I brought whiskey, Dave. Uh -huh. He needs a refill, by the way, Phoebe. Hook him up. You know what else, though, is that you you take what you do seriously. And the reason I, I think that's significant to people that you consider heroes is because it's exhausting to talk to a person and get all excited about, you know, them showing an interest in what in like the field you're in and what you do and just to find out that they're not really in it, their heart's not really in it. And I can. Uh, and most of the people that I looked up to when I started, uh, they, they, that's what they told me. They said, well, you're still here, and you genuinely seem interested in learning how to be a writer, which is the only reason why we're taking, you know, that, that's why we're taking the time to mentor you, because we know you mean it. And you come across as being very serious about what you want to do, and exactly. that's an admirable thing, you know? Exactly. You, you, you be in this business as long as you and I have, Mary. You can tell who wants to be a writer and who wants yes. to be famous. Yes. Who wants to be a writer and who wants to live the life of a writer? Right. Which, I mean, I shoot higher, what people. What the fuck is wrong with you if you want to live yeah. the life of a writer in the first place? But yeah, Matt, I mean, you're, you're genuine. You know, that that's why I don't mind helping you out, you know. Um, well, when I reached out to you, I made sure not to mention anything about writing because I had not had anything published. And for that reason, I never said a word. It wasn't until the novel came out that I'd said to you, can I give you a copy as right. a thank you? Nothing more. Yep. Although I got a uh, fib to you, I knew you were writing before that because uh, Alan told me. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> he said you were really good. And I said, all right, I'll keep my eye out for him. There was one uh, time when you you had called Alan while me and him were in the middle of uh, talking. Yeah. And he goes, hold on, it's Brian Keene. And that was my first moment of, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> was I drunk when I called him? Could you listen in on the conversation? I was probably drunk when you <laughs> called him. <laughs> so... Let's talk about putting together Welcome to the Show. Um, you ask Brian Smith. He says yes. You ask me. I say yes. Mary says yes. Jeff Strand says yes. Kelly Owen says yes. John Skip. And then, yeah, then you get to John Skip. Now, that's a whole nother level. John fucking Skip. Were you worried he would say no? Um... I was hoping he would say yes. Yeah. I kind of, it was a 50-50 call. I didn't, you know, I really wanted him. Yeah. But I'm just happy he said yes. And when he sends you his story, are, are, are you like, oh my God, how am I even going to 
sit down and read this for acceptance. I, well, what if it, you know, does that go through your mind? Oh my God, what if it sucks? What if he sent me a Trump well, story? He sends me this story and he's working hard on it and skips the kind of person who, even at the level he's at, still cares. Mm-hmm. More passion than three people put together at this stage. And he, he sends it to me and he goes, what do you think? And I said, I love it. I'd, I'd like to have it. And he goes, no, tell me what you think. And I said, you want the thesis? And he goes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. So I yeah. had to write him a reply to make sure he knew that I I understood the subtext. I understood um, like the more uh, abstract ideas he was mm-hmm. going for. I understood the ending. He wanted all of that before we had come to an agreement. Wow. So the book comes out. It goes to number one on Amazon. It bumps Stephen King. It sells out the con the weekend of its release. You know, I, I look, I, this is all in four years again, Dave. And then, I, you know, I look at your musical career. It, it, I, don't, I don't mean to make myself sound like an old man, but you've accomplished a lot for your age. Do you struggle with imposter syndrome? In writing, yeah. In writing. Yeah. Yeah? What do you do to get over that? Because I, I know there's a lot of authors your age that struggle with that as well. Yeah. I go back to work. Yeah? That's it. And say fuck it and start writing yep. the next thing. Yeah, I just try not to think about it because once you start thinking about it then you'll start second guessing yourself mm-hmm. then you start thinking about yourself rather than the work I just go back to work yeah so let's talk about collaborations speaking of getting back to work now you've done uh, as we mentioned Practitioners with Patrick Lacey yeah. um, you got a forthcoming collaboration with Brian Smith yeah um, you collaborated with Lacey first mm-hmm. now how did you guys meet just coming we, up in the trenches together and uh, we were we were published together, our, our early stuff. Pat's been working at this longer than me. So by the time we had met, he had already had three works out. Yeah. But we'd been published aside each other in like the horror zine, uh, Dark Moon Digest, a few other things. So I knew his name and I knew he was roughly my age. Right. So when we came to Scares and I met him, we really hit it off. And we were sitting at the bar and I had a short story out with someone who didn't like the ending but they wanted the story so, but they wanted me to rewrite it so when I rewrote the ending I felt like the character had so much more to them so I reached out to Pat and I said well I didn't reach out to him he was right in front of me <laughs> 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 we are sitting at the bar and I said um, would you be interested in taking a second ch- chapter of this and we pass it back and forth and we turn it into a novel you write the antagonist I'll stay as the protagonist and we'll see where it goes so that's where it started, and we developed a rough sketch of an idea for that novel. Right. We went home, started it pretty much straight away. I just did a bit of a brush up on that first chapter, which was the short story. Emailed it over to him. He had his chapter back to me within two days. I had mine back to him again uh, the next day. I stayed up all night writing the first two chapter. Two days. Oh, we flung that thing back and forth. Like, see, I find this interesting. We haven't had Patrick on the show yet, but I know in that's talk- quick. I know in talking to him. He doesn't particularly care for the process of writing. I think I think that's a fair statement, Patrick. If I'm wrong, holler at me on social media like everyone else does. But so the fact that he's turning it around that quick must mean oh, we had so much fun with it. Yeah, yeah, because we didn't have an outline, so getting to the end was the fun of writing the novel. Would be receiving Pat's chapter and trying to find the clues of where he's trying to go with it. And then I would do the same. So I would think I would leave him an obvious clue. Right. And he would go completely in a different direction. And that he would be spotting stuff that he would think I would leave as a clue that I wouldn't. Uh, so that was yeah. the really fun part because we had no outline. And then getting to see another author work in real time mm-hmm. gives you a whole new perspective. On see, that's exactly the way Jesus and I used to write. And we would stop in mid-sentence and pick it up and run with it. So, so if, if there ever is another Clickers book... I guess it'll have to be Patrick and Matt. <laughs> but I would not pass that. You know about the clicker's curse. You've heard about that, right? Yep. yep. Everybody involved with the damn books is dead except yep. for me and Shane Staley. And so, you know, Shane, watch out. Don't don't but burn any brush fires. You, you did the whole clicker's anthology, though, so that brings all of us into it, and we're all still alive. Thanks, You Keith. thought I was kidding when I said I wanted to burn. <laughs> right? Thanks yeah, a lot. You, you thought I was kidding when I said I wanted to burn the genre to the ground. <laughs> I do it in anthology. <laughs> I thought you meant step on a few small <laughs> publishers or something. Not kill a lot of us. So now, Smith, how does that come about? Does he reach out to you or do you reach out to him? Uh, it was uh, the first year at Scares. We were talking and I'd mentioned that I was working with the Walking Papers at the time, which right. is Duff McKagan's band. And Smith lit up because he's a big Guns N' Roses oh, fan. Yeah, the only 
possible bigger fan of mm-hmm. GNR than me and Brian Smith might be Glenn Roth, right. which I found out last weekend. Yeah. But yeah, but um, I'm quite a shy person. Smith's right. a very shy person. So we were talking about Guns N' Roses, which for me and him means we're sort of mumbling next to each other, you know. Aww. And then <laughs> Smith goes away and Jen comes over. His wife. She goes, he really likes you. And I said, does he? Because it's really hard to tell. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, Matt, he really likes you. And I was like, well, I really like him. And then he comes back down and we, we just sort of stand next to each other <laughs> because we're both <laughs> awkward. And um, we went to dinner. Um, he was showing me stuff from 68 Kill that was coming out and we just started talking shop as you do when right. you meet a, a new writer and you're just spitballing ideas and we had been writing this short story on your forum I'd started this idea on Brian's forum years ago where I wrote a paragraph and I said if any other writers in here want to add a paragraph and we'll just see where it goes for fun so Brian wrote a paragraph and other people joined in. I think even Jonathan Jans wrote a paragraph. Jans Look, did. So it's this giant collaborative thing that we were just doing for fun. So the way I thought of it was before you start your writing day, log on, just throw in a paragraph, and mm-hmm. it'd be a bit of fun. It's a way of warming up and yeah. then go do your work. So Brian and I wouldn't st- Everyone else kind of fell off. Me and Brian kept going on it. <laughs> and it, it went weird, and then other people were st- came back and joined in. But we were talking about that, and... He complimented me on how I twisted one part of his thing. And then when I came home from Scares, um, he sent me a giant message asking if, he, if I wanted to collaborate with him on this musical novel he had, a sort of um, expansive chronological uh, history on this fictitious band. Right. So it fit us straight Now, is us. this his band? That the Bile Lords. Yeah, yeah. he's got... Okay, I didn't... I. I knew you guys were collaborating. I knew it was music. I didn't know if it was going to be the Bile Lords yeah. or not. Of course, anybody that's a Brian Smith fan knows how this band has has been woven into many, many of his novels. Yeah. So, and actually, one or two of mine, I've I've referenced them just as a little in joke Easter egg for. I, I referenced them in uh, my Welcome to the Show story as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, does that have a publisher yet? Can you guys talk about that or no? Um, we're, it's very early stages at the moment. I got a message from today saying he's getting back to work on it, so we cool. don't really, we're not really thinking that far ahead so yeah. far. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, now, you mentioned you know Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses and, of course, the band The Walking Papers. Yeah. Um, sort of a full circle moment for you because, you know, you're collaborating with Jeff Angle to co-write a comic book called This Is How It Ends. Okay four walking papers um then your comic book gets turned into a rock music video yeah so in four years time you come completely full circle what does that feel like um it felt uh, i was gobsmacked as i am now trying to talk about it even yeah (laughs) because when i first met anna i had showed her jeff angel's music all of his projects and we took a trip to Seattle just to catch up with all our music friends over there because Anna had known Chad uh, while he was in Ireland. So right. like we just took a trip to meet everybody and just hang out. So I messaged Jeff, see if he wants to go to lunch. And we met up one night and we go out to uh, see a friend of his play. And I'd mentioned that I was working on a completely different comic book. So I showed it to him and he really liked the style. And it turned out he knew the artist I was working with. Yeah. And it was just, whoa, very strange moment because the artist is Hungarian. So the fact that they, they knew each other completely separately to us was strange. And then the next morning he was giving me and Anna a lift. Uh, we went out for breakfast. We're sitting in the, in the truck. And he says to me, would you be interested in adapting the song of the walking papers into a comic book? And I said, yeah, it would be, be nice to work together. But inside I was just <laughs> right, ready to blow. And Anna knew this. Like she, she was in between us, going, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> Did you know how to do a script or anything? I mean, writing a comic is very different than yeah. a short story. I've never written a comic in my life. Yeah. So, so did I you faked give yourself it. a crash course. I just completely faked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps that you knew the artist. The artist could give you some pointers, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Well, I'd been to see Lansdale talk about this when he was talking about writing a movie script. Right. And he said, I didn't know what I was doing, and I just stayed up all night pretending I knew what to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. (laughs) I just pretended to do what I was... Obviously, it worked. Yeah. So do you you find yourself wanting to do more comics? Did you fall in love with that style of writing? I've been approached by someone about maybe pitching something towards the end of the year. I would consider it. 
I'm definitely a prose novelist. Right. That's it. But branching out to do a couple of projects now and again in different fields, mm-hmm. I'd be interested in. Well, it's always good, and I mean, from a you know a blue collar working writer standpoint, the diversity the comics yeah. always you know the, those checks always tend to pay the rent, yeah, you know, so to speak. So, all right, well, Dave, you're always complaining we don't have enough musicians in the studio. <laughs> um, we have one. Ask your music questions. <laughs> I think, honestly, he already answered my question. Yeah? Which was about the writing in the music industry and which one's worse. And I, there's no way we're going to get a better answer than that. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> that, that is my experience uh, with, you know, the entertainment industry in general. That the music industry is the cesspit of the damned. Yeah. If only it could go that high. I prefer cesspit of the damned, personally, than, than my answer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the greatest thing ever and the worst thing yeah. ever. Like, the performance part... It's yeah. delightful. Or the creation part, all the other stuff that goes with it is fucking bullshit. Yeah. That's, about, that's about 3%. <laughs> Mike yeah. Scheidt yeah. from, uh, yeah. from Yob is out there listening right now. He's like, oh, I got our next Doom Metal album. <laughs> <laughs> Cesspit of the damned. <laughs> Mary, what about you? Questions for... Actually, I, I do. Oh, you know, do you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you write to music? No. You don't? No. Okay. Um, what do you listen to? Like, what, what are you into right now? Uh, what am I listening to at the yeah. moment? Um, Brian Keen Radio. I, well, <laughs> we actually, the whole, yeah, no, the we whole way home from Scare Security had no that. choice. <laughs> I sound biased with this, and I sound like I'm trying to plug him, but I'm not. I genuinely think Jeff Angel is uh, the best musician working full stop today. Uh, he he, uh, he played some of it for me the other night, and he, yeah. the guy really is very good. He Very, very good. He's an avid reader, so his songs take on a narrative form. Yeah. The beginning, the middle, and end. He throws in references because he's in, uh, approaching songwriting from such a unique perspective. His lyrics are like nobody else. Um, his melodies mm-hmm. are just... It's the kind of stuff that when you listen to it as a musician, you go, I don't want to play music ever again. Right. <laughs> Boy, what what would happen if he tried his hand at prose? Right. He did. He yeah. sent me a couple of stuff. Yeah? yeah? But he, he hasn't <laughs> submitted it for publication? No, but it's good. It's really yeah? good. Well, you got you to work on him then. Yeah. So. And then Dave, then you can get Devin Towson published, and we'll, we'll start a whole imprint. Devin wants, what does he want, like a, you want to do a Kickstarter for like several million dollars, I don't remember the exact one, I'll say five million dollars, to do an orchestral uh, opera about dicks. And I'm like, if I ruin the Powerball, <laughs> I'm sending him a check because that sounds like the greatest usage of money ever. Hell, if he if he novelizes that Eraserhead Press, will publish it tomorrow. I, I, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, so did you have any more for Matt, or should we toss it to Mary? Toss it to Mary. Mary, I'm tossing it to you. Oh my! Which gives me I'm a chance to <laughs> gives me um, a chance to pour more of this delicious <laughs> Glendalough. Well, we talked a lot uh, the other it's night about. Brian McClaw. I do have a question for you. What is at the top of your bucket list now, since you've accomplished so many bucket list type items? That's a good question. Thank you. Hey, on that's because I'm only drinking fake wine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she finished the bottle. So. But I finished the bottle because that's why I don't I'm drink not real wine. Nearly as drunk as I was when Maurice Broaddus was on the show. No, that's not I'm not really sure possible. that's even possible. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what would be at the top of your your writer's bucket list? Um. I think to release something that would surpass my own expectations in terms of how it does. I'm not talking about financially. I mean, right. if I release something that really struck a nerve with readers and if, you know, I, I could tell if, right. the, if the reaction was almost tangible, right, that would be, right. that's what I'm aiming for. That's a good bucket list item. So I just finished a new novel called From Up Here, which I love. It's a my coming of age novel. Right. And that one I'm very excited about. It's kind of the sister story to to What the Monsters Fear in a way. Same kind of thing, pulling off a lot of personal experiences mm-hmm. and trying to um, hit on parts of the coming-of-age story that haven't been touched on before. Right, right. When you say it's a sister novel, is your stuff interconnected? Is it is it a mythos? Uh, there is a reference to a character from What the Monsters Fear in it. All right, and listeners, you know, right now, the man has a short story collection and a novel. A solo novel out so right now you can you can you can get in the mythos oh, the early the mythos, as it's starting right. or yes that's right. so a few people have started to notice that i mentioned a character called frank carpenter right now and again and uh, i'm going somewhere with him okay that's okay. nice phoebe do you want to know more about frank carpenter sure well I, I i think i told matt this before but if i can ever get phoebe and lombardo organized which you know is 
a Herculean task. It's like, task it's like hurting the Sons of Anarchy yeah, pretty much. To, their, to their photo op. <laughs> They're going to do another Phoebe and Lombardo book club, and one of the books is What the Monsters Fear. Nice. So, nice. Phoebe is not yet read. I've read not it. I, I absolutely love it. Um, and I know Lombardo loved it. Uh, so Phoebe will be like a contrarian and, you know, do any, you know animals get murdered or no I, I <laughs> there you go know. so it should be good no murdered animals so that's no a step in the right yeah, direction unlike kelly job. owens coloring book yeah <laughs> oh Ooh. kelly you, do you wish to respond to that i will allow you the microphone to respond to that no she does not all right <laughs> a good writer doesn't respond to negative reviews kelly says a good writer doesn't respond to negative reviews. <laughs> remember that matt <laughs> All right, so Matt, where uh, where can folks find you online? On Twitter at Matt Hayward, I or E. My website is SundanceCrow.com, and you'll find me if you search me on Facebook. And what does the I R E stand for? Ireland. Ireland. I, Ireland. Just be an easy yeah. way to remember. Okay. All right. Well, everybody, give it up one more time for Matt <laughs> Hayward. And I'm just saying, Steve, he flew all the way from Ireland. You could <laughs> drive from Maine <laughs> or Florida. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just throwing that out there. Yeah, yeah. You know I love you. All right. You know what else I love, Dave? Uh, the Strange Case of Misty Ridge <laughs> by David Bryan. That is a supernatural cosmic horror mystery Woo-hoo! centered on psychic investigator Jack Keswick. Jack previously survived a tragedy that claimed many lives. He knows he's a lucky man. Uh, now he spends his time investigating reports of paranormal and occult activity. Um, since the accident he's developed a tendency to experience out-of-body events. And these bouts of astral projection are now presenting questions of their own. Mary, you're looking at me very intently. You're I, really feeling this, aren't I you? I am all about the cosmic car. You know what John Urban Sick would say? John would say that during these astral travels, Jack finds himself being repeatedly drawn to another continent <laughs> and an isolated <laughs> North African town. <laughs> See, Urban Sick doesn't have the gig now. He, he has the jazz music. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give David Bryan a free ad, aren't I, Dave? No, no, no. Um, no uh, <laughs> then this young woman turns up at Jack's door, claiming her cottage is infested with troublesome spirits. But he begins to suspect that ev- all of this, everything that's happening to him, is connected. Um, the novel is in part inspired by the works of William Hope Hodgson, one of my Ooh. all-time favorites. Um, as I said, I, I'm a few chapters in, and I am loving it. Um, that is The Strange Case at Misty Ridge. The author is David Bryan. It is available in paperback right now wherever books are sold. The ebook is exclusive on Amazon Kindle and can currently be read for free if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. So we thank david bryan for sponsoring this week's show if you would like to sponsor the horror show dave has something very important to tell you this week yes uh ad rates are going up october 1st however as tradition if you buy an ad for the rest of the year the rest of the calendar year 2018 between now and october 1st you get it at the old rate so take advantage of this uh deal and and seriously Uh, we no, we, we don't air. do that on no, the we're air. We're talking about it privately. We're number um, one for a reason. Yeah. Because we don't give our competition any way to beat us. Yes. Um, yeah. Now, you contact me because I. here's the thing. A lot of people have been buying multiple ads, which I was talking to a lot of people at Scares and Cares who, who were advertisers on the show. So every person that was there I knew had advertised. I was asking about how the ads work. And uh, they all told me the ads have been doing great, especially if they bought like three or more. There's a couple people there who bought a lot of ads on our show, and, and they were telling me, that it's not necessarily about book sales, it's about getting your name out there. Because I'll hear from people like, oh, I heard about you on the horror show. And the so ads like, play in play perpetuity. Forever. For yeah. example. Yes. For example, right now, I'm going to Brian Keene Radio. Uh, Nick Mamatas's episode from two years ago mm-hmm. is playing, and there are currently 4,031 people listening to Brian Keene Radio. So wow. whoever sponsored that from two years ago, they're hearing your ad. Their ad is being heard by four thousand thirty-one like people. Like other podcasts, we don't take the ads out of the show after we run it. They stay in forever, so your ad will run and be heard. And not only do they hear on Brian King Radio, but our backlist is very active. Like I look at the stats, there's not a show that doesn't have some listeners every month, and we have almost two hundred shows at this point. So it's a very active backlist. So anyway, right. you can buy the ads at the old rate. Between now and October 1st for the rest of the year, that's meteornotes at gmail.com. Meteor like the giant rock from the sky, and notes is like what Brian takes during the show about all the nonsense that Mary and I do um, <laughs> to yell at us later. Uh, anyway, meteornotes at gmail.com. Like I said, rates go up October 1st. After that, it's new rates. And I can tell you right now, they're going to go up again in spring 
2019. That's so, right. So uh, we'll talk about that then. That's right. There you go. I uh, want to remind folks one more time, KillerCon, August 24th through the 26th in Texas. Um, if you're nowhere near Texas, if you're out here on the East Coast, you can meet Mary, myself, Stephen Kozanowski, and Wesley Southard at Protean Books and Records in Baltimore, Maryland on September 8th. Um, we will be signing from noon to 3. Uh, a reminder that next month, September, is my final pick for the Horror Show 2018 book club, and that is I Am Providence by Nick Mamatas. Um, so if you haven't started reading it yet, get on that. Next week, Dave, yes. we have actor John Anderson. Now, is that next week? Yes, or? that's next week. Okay. Phoebe Unleashed is the week that we are in... Uh, Killer in, Con, in right? Killer Con, yep. So next week is John Anderson. That was recorded live. Mm-hmm. It scares the care. Also, uh, Matt Wilson, co-host Matt Wilson, will be back in the studio with us filling in for you, Mary, because you'll be in New Jersey. I, w- I will. Um, I'll be in New Jersey. A reminder week. that if you enjoy this show, you might also enjoy Defender's Dialogue. That's a little thing where Christopher Golden and I turn into 12-year-olds for 45 <laughs> minutes every week. You might enjoy Mary's Cosmic Shenanigans, where she talks about cosmic horror and its history every week. And you might also enjoy watching Dave holler at his cats and occasionally play a video game <laughs> most nights at twitch.tv slash Meteor Notes. That's twitch.tv slash Meteor Notes. By the way, if you're an Amazon Prime member... Ooh. You know that you can watch Dave. Not only well, Dave, explain how that works. If you have Amazon Prime uh, subscription, you get a thing. One of your benefits is a Twitch Prime subscription. You can give anybody a a f- subscription to Twitch. It costs you nothing. All you need to do is link your Amazon and Twitch account together, and then you can go to the person's page and give them a thirty day subscription. Absolutely free. And the best part is, whoever you subscribe to, as in me, gets paid. So you're basically taking Amazon's money and giving it to me. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty awesome. Fight the power. So fight the power. Please, if you have an Amazon subscription, please use your Twitch Prime subscription. Even if you don't want to use it, use it on somebody because it's a totally free benefit you get with Amazon Prime. Not a lot of people know about. It takes less than five minutes, like a minute, to, to link the two accounts together. And, and then you just every 30 days, you can give it to the same person, another person, whoever you want to use it on. But it's an awesome benefit that they don't promote enough that I think you need to know about. So That's right. That's right. And while you're using that Prime account, make sure you pick up Welcome to the Show, Matt Hayward, Crystal Lake Publishing. That's right. All right. right. Uh, In the meantime, if there's something you want us to talk about, hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, or our website. Uh, The Horror Show is available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, and all other platforms via our dear friends at the Project Entertainment Network. We'll see you back here next week with John Anderson. Bye. Bye. Armcast, Dead Sexy Podcasts. I'm your host, Armand Rosamilia. Fridays exclusively on Project Entertainment Network, where I interview authors, publishers, editors, artists, filmmakers, narrators, the lady from Walmart, whoever I feel like talking to. That's every Friday, Armcast, right here on Project Entertainment Network.